Good to see you all this afternoon. Hope that you guys enjoyed the worship, the presence of God. Today we're going to be beginning a new series. And it's a series about loving our neighbor and looking outside of us, looking outside of ourselves and loving those who are around us. As we begin, though, if you guys have your Bibles, I would love for you to open to Luke chapter 10. If you don't have your Bibles, hopefully you have a phone or some sort of device or something that has the Bible on it. We're going to read Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. If you've been a Christian for a good length of time, there's probably there's a good probability that you're familiar with this. Uh, this story that Jesus that Jesus gave. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. I'm just going to go ahead and read it, reading from the New King James. It says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? I love how Jesus answers a question with a question sometimes. He says, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So Jesus is trying to get to the heart of the, 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 the reason why, why this lawyer is asking this question. So the lawyer answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus answered him and said, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But the lawyer, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came, looked, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, which would be two days' wages, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And the lawyer said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, go and do likewise. Turn to your other neighbor and say, go and do likewise. So this is not just a story that Jesus says, that Jesus tells his disciples and tells his lawyer in order for them to feel good. It's a story that Jesus requires action. He says, don't just hear these words, but go and do likewise. So he's telling the lawyer, don't just spend your time in the law. Don't just spend your time reading. He said, go and do likewise. Do means action. It means action. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as myself, as yourself. The lawyer says, who's my neighbor? And Jesus says, this is how you love. Go and do likewise. I went through this verse, and I would encourage you guys to do this. Take your, take your Bible, and in these verses in the Bible, take a highlighter, and something really interesting to do is go through it and highlight all of the verbs in this story all of the verbs in this story, what people did in this story. First, we have the thieves. 
It says they stripped the man. They beat him up. They wounded him. They departed from him. They went away from him and they left him half dead. This is what the thieves did to him. We could say that they took away his dignity. They hurt him. Could be, you know, in his physical body, but obviously it's a, a, a mental, emotional thing as well. They departed from him. They rejected him. They left him. And they left him for dead. They didn't care about his life. They just abandoned him. There are certain people in our world that have those things happen to them. They have been rejected. They, people ran away from them. They have been injured. They've been used. They've, their dignity has been taken away from them. But what happened next? Then it says a certain man, or sorry, a priest came by. And it's interesting where you see the verbs, the things that the priest did. The priest saw him. But when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Then, another, then a Levite, he came and looked, but he also passed by on the other side. In, in Jesus' world during this time, you know, the priest, he's the head of the of the temple he's the one who brings the sacrifices to god he's he's the clean he's the pure one he's the representative of god to man he's the representative of man to god but when he saw this guy he saw him but then he passed by on the other side he just passed him by the levite the levites were a group of people they were one of the tribes of israel and and this tribe of Israel was the, the tribe that was chosen to serve in the temple. And so this Levite was one of the chosen ones, but he saw also, and what did he do? He passed by on the other side. But then we see the Samaritan. Now the Samaritan and the Jews. This guy who got beat up, he was a Jew. And the Samaritan and the Jews, they did not like each other. They had, there was racism, there was tension, there was spiritual, there was religious differences. And the Jews didn't get along with the Samaritans. The Samaritans didn't get along with the Jews. Sometimes it, it's, even, it's even been uh, uh, seen that the Jews, normally when they would travel from the south to the north of Israel, rather than going straight through, which they would have to go through Samaria, they would cross the Jordan River, travel north, cross the Jordan back on the other side, so they would not have to travel through Samaria. That's how much of a difference, that's how much of a tension there was between these two groups of people. But this Samaritan saw this Jew. And it's interesting because if you look up on this on the screen here, we see the priest, what did he do? He came, he saw, and he passed by. What did the Levite do? He came, he saw, and he passed by. But the Samaritan, he came, he saw, he had compassion. And that compassion is what compelled him to do all of the other actions that he did. We see the list, the list of things that he did after that. The Samaritan went to him. He bandaged his wounds. He poured oil and wine. He set him on, uh, he set, set him on his own animal. He brought him to an inn. Uh, he took care of him. He took out money and gave him to the innkeeper. He told the innkeeper, take care of him. And he said, when I come again, I will repay you if you used any more money than what I've already given you. So that compassion... He did the same things that the priests and Levites did. He came and he saw. He saw the same things that the priests and the Levites saw. But there was something in there, the compassion, the feeling, the, the, it, the that, that word compassion is like a, it's like a, 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 a deep, deep feeling inside that he was moved inside of him. And he saw him and he recognized and he had empathy for this guy. And he said, I have to do something. 
I've got to do something. And that compassion compelled him to action. It's interesting if you look at the other uses of the word compassion in the New Testament, it's not used very, very often. But it talks about Jesus having this compassion. And Jesus had the compassion when he saw the multitudes. There was the multitudes and they were hungry one day. He had, they all came to Jesus and heard his teachings. And Jesus had compassion on them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. This is what the Bible says. Jesus knew their situation. Jesus knew what their life situation was all about. Jesus took the time to understand who they were and what they were experiencing. I don't know what the, where the priest was going. I don't know what the priest was thinking. I don't know what was on the Levites' schedule. But they were rushing, and they rushed right by. They passed right by. They didn't take the time to have compassion. Compassion requires us to stop. Compassion requires us to not pass by, but to stop and to see and to experience, to understand somebody's situation. So as we get into this series, I want to encourage each one of us. You know, sometimes it's our schedule. Sometimes it's our devices or our, our, our lives that keep us going. But if we're not careful, we'll become like the priest and the Levite who's, who, who come and see, just like the, the Samaritan did, but then we'll pass by. But let's be like the Samaritan who stops, who understands a situation, who has empathy. And just like this guy who, who was suffering, there's people in our world who we come across every day who their dignity has been taken away by somebody. They've been wounded by somebody. Maybe in their, maybe it's emotional wounds, maybe it's physical wounds. They've been rejected. It says that these guys, these thieves, departed. They went away. They left this guy for dead. They didn't care about his life. We'll come across those kind of people. But let's understand and have a heart of compassion for the people that are around us. Amen? Let's not be people who rush through life and pass by. Let's not pass by those who are around us. This doesn't mean that we have to start a ministry or we have to change the course of our life. It doesn't mean that we have to. No, let's just encounter the people that God puts in our path. You know, if we look at the story of the Samaritan, the Samaritan, he used his resource. He took his time, but then he took him to a place where he could get help. And then he continued on his journey. The Samaritan had a place to go as well. It says he went on his journey, but then later on he came back to check on him to make sure that he's doing okay. Living a life of compassion doesn't mean that we have to have a, a burdened life where we're always, oh, I have to take care of every single person that has this. No, just the people that God puts in your way. Who are those people that God is leading you to? Who are those people that you come across, that you come and you see but make sure we don't pass by. Amen? Let's have hearts of compassion. Let's take the time that it takes to have lives of compassion. Let's be open to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, who are those people that you want me to see today? Maybe it's you, 
you're walking through the mall and you see somebody. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, you're driving your moto and you see somebody who maybe they have a big load on their moto and they fall down and, okay, God has led you. Stop for a minute. Have compassion. Think about, man, that's so difficult. Help them get back up. Let's look around us. God has put you on this earth. God has put a deposit of godliness and holiness and life and love in each one of us. Let's let that out. And let's be shining lights to all those people who are around us. Amen? Let's all stand up together. And I want to finish by praying here, but I don't want to just be the only one praying. Like it's kind of lonely when I'm the only one praying. Let's all pray together and say to God, God, here I am. Here I am. And maybe I haven't lived that life of compassion that I need to. Let's open our, our hearts to the Holy Spirit. Let's open up our hearts to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, use me. Holy Spirit, lead me. Help me to see those people that I come across and the people that I can actively show God's love to. Give me a greater heart of compassion. Help me to understand their situation and what they're going through and how I can be a help to those people who are around me. Can you guys do that with me? All right. Let's lift up our voices. We're going to spend maybe like two minutes, but let's just offer our hearts to the Lord and say, God, here I am. Father, Heavenly Father, we open up our hearts to you today. God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the example of the Samaritan. God, who, who had a heart of compassion. He came, he saw, but he didn't pass by. He had a heart of compassion. We say to you, God, today, give us a greater heart of compassion. A heart that does not pass by, but a heart that understands. A heart that sees and a heart that does. God, this week, as we go through our lives, we're going to come across people who have needs. We're going to come across people who have difficulties in their lives. God, use us. Let's say that to the Lord. God, use me. Use me to show compassion because I want to show your love to others. I give you my heart. I give you my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much. Let's do this. Let's be people who show compassion, who show the love of Christ everywhere we go. Also, if you guys need prayer, if anybody here needs prayer today, in this room, there's a doorway right in this corner here. You just go in to the left. After every service, we have a team of leaders and people who can pray with you. Just let them know what you need prayer for. We'll join our hearts together. We'll join our faith together, and we'll pray together. Anybody has tithes or offerings, we have these envelopes and we have these boxes here. We have one here and I think we have one out in the lobby. There's two or three of them around. Uh, you guys can feel free to put your tithes and offerings in there. Have an awesome, awesome week. Let's live our lives with open eyes to see those people around us who need compassion. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. See you next week.